After months of anticipation and speculation, Honda finally announced the Rebel 1100T. There's been some different things on the internet about this and pictures being thrown around, ideas, thoughts, but we finally have some answers directly from Honda and today I'm going to talk about my initial impressions and thoughts on the 1100T and go over some of the information that we already currently have as well as maybe speculate just a little bit. We're going to talk about some of the things that it does have. We're also going to talk about some of the things that maybe I was hoping it would have or maybe it should have. And then we're also going to talk about whether or not I think this is a good bike for me and if I should get one. So stick on around and let's get into it. My thoughts on the Honda Rebel 1100T are... What's going on everybody? I was thinking about taking some pictures, but man, these heated gloves are really annoying to <laughs> take on and put off. And I am uh, on the lower side of light today. Come on, portrait mode. What is going on everybody? Thank you all for tuning on into the Evergreen Motovlog channel. Today is a cold November evening and it is exactly one day after Honda announced the Rebel 1100 Touring, or the 1100T. So I figured I'd get out and just uh, talk to you guys a little bit about it. Putting on some of the heated gear, got the heated gloves here now, got an extra sweatshirt on, so we'll see how this does. On the short ride over here, I could already tell that it's going to be a cold one. So the Honda Rebel 1100T, T stands for Touring, like I mentioned. What are my initial thoughts on this new motorcycle announced by Honda? Which is Monday, November 7th. But before I get into that, something happened to my mirror. <laughs> That's a problem. There we go. If you're new to the channel, thank you for stopping on by and hanging on out. If you've not had a chance, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I've got tons of motorcycle content, both on the channel and headed your way, so smash that notification bell for future uploads and or live streams. So Honda announced the Rebel 1100T, and I think there's kind of just been this overall desire to have a touring model of the Rebel. I think that that's something that some people have been wanting, and I don't blame them because even on the 500, you know, this is a solid bike, and I think I could tour on it to some degree. I think there are definitely going to be limitations. You know, obviously this bike isn't designed to go tour, and so there are going to be things that you may not have on this bike that you would on a traditional bagger or touring motorcycle. But yeah, I think it's definitely capable, and I'm sure the 1100 is even more so. I personally... I have not ridden the 1100. It is a bike that I'm really interested in and I've thought about getting one. I've kind of gone back and forth, but we'll get into that in just a little bit. So when it comes to the 1100T, Honda released this motorcycle and I'm gonna just kind of talk about some of the things that I've noticed, some of the things that jump out at me. Like I said, some of my first thoughts, my initial impressions of this motorcycle because I think it's interesting, you know, here at the Evergreen Motovlog channel, we try to cover all things motorcycle, and since I ride a Honda Rebel, I figured, let's talk about Rebel news, right? <laughs> so, without further ado, let's get into it. So, the Rebel 1100T has a couple new features. So, first off, it only comes in the DCT model. DCT, if you're not familiar, is stands for dual clutch transmission, and it essentially turns your manual motorcycle, which I'm riding right now, pulling in the clutch, shifting to, to different gears, all that stuff, it turns that motorcycle into an automatic where you just twist the throttle and go. They brought it out for the Rebel 1100 when they first announced that motorcycle and so you can get both an 1100 manual version and an 1100 DCT model. However, when it comes to the touring version of the motorcycle, that was just announced, you are only able to get it in the DCT model. 
And that may be attractive for some people because people that are riding baggers and touring, maybe having, you know, something less to deal with while you're riding might be nice and helpful and attractive. But at the same time, also while you're riding, if you have a long ride, you know, multiple hours, that kind of thing, maybe it isn't, you know, maybe you'd rather have a clutch still so that, you know, when you're riding, you can shift and that kind of thing. So I kind of see both sides to that. Um, it would be kind of nice if they did offer the manual version just so that it was available. And who knows, they may add it later. But I just thought that was kind of interesting. There are some of the things on the bike that it has, and I'll go over those now and kind of show those up on the screen as I'm talking. Um, so for the obvious things, if you read on the little description that Honda provided and you look at the picture, you have the extra fairing that I think, um, you know, in watching other videos and kind of just looking at stuff, it's kind of trying to make the motorcycle look a little bit like the Harley-Davidson Lowrider S. And I thought that was kind of interesting. That is a nice looking motorcycle. It's actually the ST. Um, and I, I actually like that motorcycle a lot. It's one of the bikes I'm considering getting and upgrading to one day. I need to go ride it and check it out and, you know, see what it's all about, that kind of thing. So you have the front fairing that comes from the factory. And then additionally, you also have the saddlebags. They're hard case lockable bags that come from the factory that match the color of the motorcycle. And I think that's pretty cool. You know, you can get something that matches your motorcycle. I don't know if that's ice. I feel like that might be ice. I know that that's de-icer. Is that actually ice? I sure hope not. <laughs> so you have the bags that look like or that, that have, you know, the exact same paint as the motorcycle. And that's cool. I think that's a neat feature. The fairing and the bags and the motorcycle all tie in together and that looks really cool. However, if Honda was going to go with a touring model of the Rebel 1100, I kind of feel like there might be a couple features that they didn't include that I actually would have liked to have had them include. And those features might be kind of some of those things that you would think about when you're thinking of a traditional touring motorcycle. You know, you're thinking of a bagger. You know, if I just kind of think about some of those things, it's like, well, I would like that bike to have forward controls. And right now you can only get aftermarket forward controls. And so that's, you know, an extra cost and kind of frustrating um, for people who don't want to mess with the stock motorcycle. Having a forward control option would be really nice directly from the factory. And that's something that I've dealt with in, uh, for sure on my Rebel 500 because I've taken this bike for over 200 mile rides and noticed that after a while the mid controls really get tiring and I really find myself wanting to stretch my legs out. Additionally, the other kind of things I'm thinking about, you know, would be maybe more more of a comfortable seat from the factory. What it what it sounds like, you know, and some of these things are kind of going from like the facts, which is from the fact sheet that Honda sent to speculation um, and, you know, something <laughs> speculating from my perspective. But, you know, you've got the, the description not mentioning anything about suspension or about the seat. And I, I feel like those are things that people already upgrade immediately, but it would be kind of nice, you know, if they're gonna charge more money for a motorcycle, which we'll get into pricing in a minute, it would be kind of nice if they had a little bit of an upgraded seat and suspension added to the motorcycle, or if, if they could upgrade those pieces a little bit, just so that, you know, if you're really gonna make a motorcycle that's designed to tour and to be out uh, for long rides, I would think that it would make sense to have some of those things that people always, you know, people traditionally upgrade anyway, built into the factory motorcycle. And that would maybe make that bike a little bit more attractive to people like me who, you know, I've got the 500 and I've been thinking about upgrading to an 1100 or maybe other motorcycles and I haven't uh, pulled the trigger yet. You know, if you're trying to attract me to get the Rebel 1100T, you know, I know what the stock seat is about, you know, at least on the 500. And I know that it's not great. So why would I want to get a motorcycle that is supposedly designed for touring with this kind of seat that I know I'm going to immediately have to spend another $400 to upgrade? Which, by the way, if you've not had a chance, go ahead and check out my Mustang videos up here. 
great seat love it on my rebel 500 so i i feel like there's some things that you get with the with the new 1100t that are nice you know lockable storage bags that match the color of the bike that's freaking awesome i love that you know a fairing is nice i'm kind of curious about the fairing how hard is it to remove and how how expensive is it because you know there's going to be different riders depending on how tall you are that fairing might be really beneficial and it also might be really annoying you know and it might cause a lot of face shield buffeting and so i don't know how easy it would be to put on a new aftermarket fairing on top of that and if it would look right if it would work you know so that's kind of another you know kind of concern i have maybe about what it's coming with but now let's get into the price a little bit so the rebel 1100t starts at eleven thousand four hundred ninety nine dollars and what you get for that is essentially the dct version of the 1100 based on what honda's website is saying with the additional bags and the fairing now the cost for an 1100 dct comes in right at ten thousand two hundred and ninety nine so essentially you have your dct 1100 which is the exact same bike as the 1100t essentially what the difference there is is you have the 1100 dct and you can spend ten thousand two hundred and ninety nine dollars or for an additional twelve hundred dollars you can get a fairing that may or may not work and lockable saddlebags and i thought that was kind of interesting i'm gonna pop the face shield up here for a second got some fog action in the cold weather here like i said it's about 42 degrees right now i'm out here vlogging for y'all so for an extra 1200 dollars it seems like you're just kind of getting two modifications that if you went to the aftermarket if if, if you went out to the aftermarket market <laughs> if you went and looked for the aftermarket options 1200 dollars would probably get you a long way so if you bought just a regular dct version and had twelve hundred dollars to play with you could probably get not only nice saddlebags you could get some viking bags for maybe four or five hundred bucks you could get a nice fairing maybe a memphis shades fairing and then you could have a little bit extra money left over to spend on a seat or go towards a seat or something like that or an exhaust or whatever other accessories you want to add to your motorcycle additionally if you wanted to get the manual version of the 1100 you are now spending nine thousand four hundred ninety nine dollars i may have my my dollar amounts mixed up and if that is the case i apologize <laughs> but essentially what it comes down to is ah crap i can't remember and i apologize i had these memorized earlier today and i must have forgotten them you know focusing on the road minding my surroundings right <laughs> But essentially, you have the manual version of the 1100, which again, has almost all the features, you know, I would say pretty much everything, cruise control, rider modes, all that kind of good stuff. You could go up and you could spend another $600 and get the automatic transmission. Then I understand that, that makes sense. But for the touring version, if you go from the 1100 manual motorcycle, all the way up to the 1100 touring now you're going to be sitting at an 1800 dollar difference so yeah i do understand that you're getting the automatic transmission but for the price of a honda rebel 1100 t you could go out and get an 1100 manual and a brand new honda navi <laughs> and i know that there's dealer fees and all that kind of stuff but you get the point you know what are we really getting from the dct model or to the touring or even from the manual model to the touring you know i feel like there's just you already have the manual models and the dct model and you already have some of those options why not change things up a little bit more and go with go with something that's a little bit different you know i don't know i just feel like that that would make more sense from honda's perspective like i said if you could add some of those additional features if you could add a set of forward controls or even just have it as an option and you could go in you could add more comfort make it a little bit more of that traditional bagger style and have some more customization options and who's to say they won't do that it, it kind of looks like honda was trying to push this touring model out last year because they have the upgraded colors 
for the original 1100 and 1100 DCT. They added new colors for 2023, but they don't have new colors, um, the newer colors for the Touring model. So, you know, uh, I think Life of Birch pointed this out, but it, it seems like maybe they were trying to push this out last year with when those, you know, you have the red and the, I think, gray or black, the red and the black colors. And this year you got the gray and the green. And, you know, maybe they just hit hit some supply chain issues and weren't able to get the touring model out in time. So they pushed it a year. So we may see, we may see uh, an update to the touring model. I don't know. That is to be determined. Okay, so I apologize. The 1100T is 11299 The 1100 is 9499 And the normal 1100 with just the DCT is... 10,099. So there's your difference. You could go up 600 bucks from the manual to the DCT model and you get that that automatic transmission. But then if you go from the regular DCT model to the 1100T, you got to spend an additional $1,200 just for saddlebags and a fairing. So what are my final thoughts on the 1100 Touring? Well, you know, I think it's something that has been talked about for a little while, at least for a big part of 2022. And I, I like what Honda's trying to do. I like that they're taking existing platforms and just adding to them. It's kind of cool. They turned the Honda Rebel 500 into a scrambler type motorcycle. And I think that looks kind of cool. But it's also essentially just a Rebel 500 with a different fender and exhaust. But anyway, that'll be a different video. For the 1100 Touring, I like what Honda's trying to do, but for that extra $1,200, I just don't know if it's worth it, you know? Not if we're getting the exact same bike. And like I said, a lot of this is going to be speculation, just because the motorcycle isn't out yet, right? People haven't had a chance to ride it, do a review, all that kind of stuff. So I understand that, you know, there is still some information that we have yet to see. So even though there's a little bit of information that we haven't seen yet, if I just had to go off of, again, what's what I can see visually and what is on the Honda website as a description for the 1100T, you know, you're really only getting the fairing and the saddlebags, which if you went and looked at the aftermarket options, I think those are gonna, you can find good options that are gonna be well below the $1,200 price point. Let me know your thoughts down below, what you think of the 1100 Touring model, if you think it was a good idea, if you think what Honda did is actually delivering, or if you think that maybe they could have done a little bit more. I, I think there was some hype for this, and it leaves me wanting a little bit more, you know? Um, like I'm kinda here, hoping that there is already a 2.0 model or something like that because I think that, you know, if Honda's trying to capture a little bit of that market and kind of just, you know, have people who like the Rebel in general and want a bagger option, they should have gone with a couple more traditional bagger things. Like I said, I think the Rebel 1100 already on its own was solid for, for touring and something you could take on a longer distance. Like I said, based on my experience with the 500 and you know what the 1100 platform has to offer. Take that how you may, but <laughs> I still think it's gonna be a cool bike. I'll definitely, when I am looking to test ride bikes next year, I probably will try to get, uh, get on an 1100T just to see what it's about, see how comfortable it is and kind of see what I think about it in person. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments and let me know if you wanna see an 1100 a Rebel 1100 on the channel. You know, I think that that would be kind of a cool idea. But, you know, is that the motorcycle I should go for? I don't know. Is that the one? I, I definitely am going to do a test ride. I'm going to check it out. But is that the bike I'm actually going to go with? I'm not sure yet. So leave a comment down below. I do think I really like the new colors for sure. Um, I don't think. I know. I know I like the new colors. Got the green, which... On the Evergreen Motovlog channel, we <laughs> appreciate the color green. And then you also have the gray, which I think looks pretty nice. Pretty nice. So leave a comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are, both on the 1100T. Did Honda deliver? Was it a good idea for them to release this model? Should they have done more, or are you satisfied with, with what they're doing? 
but let me know i appreciate everyone thank you all for hanging on out and yeah let me know if you want to see an 1100 on the channel one day i think that'd be cool so who knows but <laughs> that's gonna do for this video thank you all for stopping by and hanging on out like i said if you've not had a chance go ahead and hit the subscribe button because i've got tons of motorcycle and honda rebel content both on the channel and headed your way so smash that notification bell for future uploads and or live streams go ahead like the video leave a comment and you know i mean at the end of the day i still think that the 1100 t is probably going to be a solid bike lockable saddlebags has been something that's annoyed me for a long time because i really want lockable saddlebags on my rebel 500 and i've been looking for a good option and struggling to find a solid option but again that's that's another video <laughs> that's a video that i have recorded and ready to drop it's going to be coming soon so stay tuned and keep your eyes out but you know so i mean the rebel 1100 has been a very successful bike and I think it's a good motorcycle in general. I've really liked all the content out there on it. And like I said, I've been thinking a lot about getting one for my channel. So, you know, you got your Honda reliability, all that good stuff. And it still comes with all the great features, cruise control, which is huge, riding modes, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, just kind of trying to get my first thoughts out, kind of think about this in real time. I put together something earlier today, but also just kind of trying to go off of the cuff a little bit and just kind of see what I think about it. I think it's going to be a fun bike and you can't go wrong and it's still not horribly expensive, you know. You're still paying less for it than you would be for a Harley and other models. So, you know, probably what a lot of the people on the internet are going to do is they're probably going to focus on the $1,200 difference and be like, eh, is it really worth it? But you know what, if you want a bagger and you think the, the way the fairing looks and and all that kind of stuff. I mean, you know, I think it looks cool and and I like the being able to have the fairing and the saddlebags match the color from the bike. To some people that matters and I totally understand that. So anyway, I'll go ahead and shut up. I gotta get on home. It's getting dark. It's freaking cold out here, you know. Like I said, middle of November. I'm riding out here with my heated gloves and uh, <laughs> yeah uh brave in the dark cold november weather up here in the pacific northwest so yeah thank you all for hanging on out make sure to like comment and subscribe let me know what you want to see on the channel in the future and yeah man it's cold i don't know if i'm going to be able to make it home holy crap <laughs> I, i've been praying that these uh, de-icer lines, this is what we do here in the Pacific Northwest. We don't put salt down and, uh, you know, we don't we don't invest in uh, snow plows or anything like that. We put, we put de-icer down. So I was hoping that those de-icer lines are, were, were put down this morning or that they were put down this evening as a, you know, precaution for, for tomorrow and not because <laughs> it's been icy today. I didn't think it was icy. It was sunny all day and it was in the 40s, but you know, you get some of those areas that have the <clears throat> shadows and whew, I just don't know. But we're doing good. We're staying upright, you know, two wheels on the ground, right? Yep, 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 yep. We are good to go. This is the Evergreen Motor Vlog Channel reminding y'all to ride safe out there, mind your surroundings, and I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace.